Hello friends, I'm here to talk to you about how neurogenesis and the GABAergic system are interrelated. Unfortunately, it's not a completely clear relation or a one way, um, it's not something easy to explain like the serotonergic system's effects on neurogenesis. When serotonergic signaling increases, neurogenesis increases. This is not so much the case for GABAergic signaling. I'll tell you three points about how GABA affects neurogenesis in a little while. Before I do, I should tell you, the, for the folks that don't follow my playlist, what is neurogenesis? Neurogenesis is one of the pillars of cognitive enhancement, in my opinion. Uh, I, don't, I don't know how other people think of it, but for me, the creation of new neurons, which happens both at birth and, at, and in adulthood, I mean in childhood as well as in adulthood, which is called neurogenesis, and neurons being the basic cells of the brain, is extremely important, not just for long-term uh, intelligence, but more importantly for the prevention of dementia and mental deterioration over time. You see, while in childhood we can birth new neurons across our brains, in adulthood we only birth new neurons in two areas, one called the subventricular zone and one called, called the subglandular zone. The area that you're most familiar out of those two areas is one called the hippocampus. The hippocampus is where memories are stored. It's also the area that, for example, cannabis is known to be neurotoxic to, acutely, at least THC is. And it's also the area that is underdeveloped in people that had traumatic or stressful childhoods. And is one of the ways that people think, um, you know, you forget to get around things because you may have had trauma and there's toxicity in that area and so on. So people who have uh, childhood issues tend to have smaller hippocampuses in general. The good news is you continue to develop uh, neurons there into adulthood. And you can change this with the use of certain drugs and molecules and this is what a lot of people do with cognitive enhancement. Now, what I want to tell you about the GABAergic system and uh, neurogenesis. First of all, neurogenesis occurs through a lot of growth factors. One of them is called brain-derived neurotrophic factor. It's BDNF. It's one of the most famous ones. When GABAergic activity increases in immature but not mature neurons, um, BDNF expression also increases. Moreover, BDNF agonism at its target, which is called TRKB, the receptor, it, the target is often found with GABAergic terminals. So sometimes BDNF's activity at TRKB can also cause an increase in GABAergic transmission or communication. So basically, GABAergic communication can increase the expression of one of these growth factors, and this growth factor's activity can even acutely increase GABAergic expression. This is the first thing. The second thing that I wanted to tell you guys about is that allosteric modulators of the GABA-A receptors, like most famously benzodiazepines, but this does not apply to all of them, by the way, but most of them. Uh, for example, one that it doesn't apply to is S. S uh, it's, it's hard to, um, I'll spell it for you. It's E-S-Z-O-P-I-C-I-O-N-E. -E. Anyway, the point is there are some allosteric modulators that there's not been found to be true for, but for most of them, including benzodiazepines, what happens is this. They increase the rate of maturation of immature neurons, okay, helping neurogenesis in that way, but they also increase the cell cycle exit of proliferating uh, neural progenitor cells, which are basically, basically lowering neurogenesis. So they increase the maturation of immature neurons, but they decrease the potential of your brain to produce new neurons in the first place. So they speed it up and limit it. Okay, so this is the second thing. These are allosteric modulators like benzodiazepines, which is why for one of the reasons they're not very useful for cognitive enhancement. The, th the third thing that I want to tell you guys about is that SSRIs, which are the molecules most known or most used to increase neurogenesis, are known to increase the expression of something called CREB, which is the uh, C-AMP response binding element. And it is thought to do this via indirect activity through inhibiting CERT, which is the serotonin transporter, that eventually affects GABA-A receptors. So it's thought that SSRIs effects on neurogenesis, which are partially due to C-AMP, or uh, sorry, uh, to the CAMP uh, response binding element, which is CREB, is also in turn due to GABA-A activity. And certainly, if, you t if you've used us SSRIs before, you'll notice that you'll have, after about five or six months, more, in, uh, more of an inhibitory nature. You won't be as impulsive, for example, as one of the things that they're most known to do. And I think a lot of this has to do with these downstreams effect on GABA. 
Thankfully, these effects are not the kind of effects that produce these crazy withdrawals that you see with benzodiazepines and so on when you access those GABA A receptors directly. I hope this was helpful for you guys that are interested in following along with the series. I'll keep you updated with uh, future chapters in the coming weeks. I'll try to spread them out so that they don't get too um, intense and while keeping them, um, keeping each video, you know, self-inclusive so it's understandable on its own. Thank you so much for listening. I'll see you next time.